Hello, I'm Joel Pickett. I'm one of the neurosurgeons at the Spine and Neurosurgery Center and appreciate you taking the time to look over this DVD. We're going to be speaking today about the treatment of vertebral compression fractures, particularly those associated with osteoporosis. This primarily will deal with treating this using the minimally invasive technique of kyphoplasty. This DVD does enable you to obtain CME credits if you fill out the accompanying paperwork that came in the packet. Spine problems are a growing uh, disorder in this country as the age of the general population increases. Approximately 20% of the total population report back pain, and approximately 80% of all adults will suffer from back pain at some point during their life. One of the common causes of back pain, particularly in the more mature population, is compression fractures. The anatomy of the spine is quite simple, and I'm sure that all looking at this DVD remember it well. But just to review, the basic areas of the spine include the cervical, the thoracic, the lumbar, and the sacrococcygeal, as demonstrated on this slide. When looking at the individual vertebrae, there are differences in the morphology, but in general, as one moves from a more rostral position to a more inferior position, the vertebrae do increase in size as demonstrated by this slide where the cervical vertebrae are much smaller than those in the lumbar region. Of course, form follows function and the lumbar vertebrae do carry much more weight and therefore are much more robust. Osteoporosis is one of the more common causes of vertebral compression fractures. And osteoporosis, of course, is a disorder that is associated with compromised bone strength. There is a thinning, uh, in essence, of the bone trabeculae, and this weakening of the bone makes it much more likely to fracture under any type of load. This can include trauma, such as a fall, or it can be a simple injury, such as a hard sneeze or even a cough. It's a very common problem in this country with over 700,000 vertebral compression fractures occurring annually. This results in approximately 150,000 hospitalizations uh, per year. The average length of stay is eight days and this results in a cost of an excess of $1.6 billion annually. Osteoporosis related disability confines patients to more immobile days in bed than stroke, heart attack, and breast cancer combined. The costs of caring for these patients are rising annually as the age of the average person in this country increases. Demographically, postmenopausal women greater than age 55 are at much higher risk, and patients that already have some degree of spinal deformity such as a thoracic kyphosis are at higher risk. Chronic treatment with steroids such as prednisone are also at higher risk. In evaluating a patient uh, for a vertebral compression fracture, it's often difficult to make the diagnosis. They're sometimes asymptomatic. Sometimes their complaints are somewhat vague. Oftentimes they are more focal and, and severe, but sometimes the pain is relatively mild. If you have a patient that's complaining of spinal pain and you suspect there may be a compression fracture, a good starting point, of course, is a physical exam to see if there's tenderness in some region of the spine. If you've isolated such an area, point tenderness, and that's in the general area of their complaint, then further workup with radiographs would be reasonable. A good starting point here would be a simple AP and lateral plane film of the spine, as that generally does demonstrate fractures of this type. This is a simple uh, lateral plane film that demonstrates a compression fracture. And if one looks at the far left, you can see this fracture as being a slightly shortened vertebrae when compared to those above and below it. This was one week after the injury. At eight weeks after the injury, the middle film shows that there's been a further collapse of that vertebrae and it's now much more evident. The MRI scan can be very useful in assessing patients with compression fracture. This helps us to date the fracture as there are some patients that have chronic areas of compression fracture that have healed well and are no longer giving them any symptoms. The MRI scan will generally show edema in the acute and subacute fractures as demonstrated on, the, on this film at the far right. The normal vertebrae have a somewhat gray appearance on the T2 weighted image. However, that uh, at the fractured site is essentially white. The MRI also enables us to look at the spinal canal and the relationship of the fractured vertebrae with the spinal cord. In compression fractures, there oftentimes are retropulse fragments of bone. In cases such as that, uh, kyphoplasty is contraindicated. 
This is a 3D reconstruction of a CT scan demonstrating a compression fracture that ultimately required an open procedure. This is an extremely large operation, and as you can see, a good deal of hardware was used to correct that deformity. In the elderly population with severe osteoporosis, this type of hardware would not obtain good purchase and would fail. This would be an extremely large operation to put an elderly person through in the first place and probably would be unsuccessful. When looking at the area of the spine most likely to develop compression fractures, the area between the thoracic and lumbar spine is one of the most common sites. This is because the relatively rigid thoracic spine is transitioning to the more mobile lumbar spine. This creates a stress riser. Another area where there is a stress riser and a common location of compression fractures is in the mid-thoracic region. So those are the two areas we generally see uh, compression fractures in the elderly. There are different shapes of compression fractures, and as long as there are no retropulse fragments, any of these are amenable to balloon kyphoplasty. The most common being the wedge-type compression fracture, which is seen on the left, although an almost equal number will be seen as a biconcave appearance. Less common are the simple crush-type compression fractures as seen on the right. The long-term consequences of an osteoporosis-type uh, compression fracture is a slow and steady spiral downhill. They obviously present with back pain and some degree of debility from their discomfort. This results in a more sedentary lifestyle, loss of bone mass, and possibly an increase in the degree of compression or other compression fracture. This results in spinal deformity, a decrease in lung capacity, a decrease in endurance, loss of appetite, increasing pain, and ultimately depression, anxiety, and ultimately can result in increased rate of mortality. It is imperative that we arrest this process at some point to prevent this downward spiral. By preventing it early in the course of this illness, we can hopefully avoid most of these pitfalls. The treatment with a balloon kyphoplasty can restore some of the deformity that's caused and reduce the back pain and hopefully allow a higher degree of function and prevent the patient from entering this dark course. In patients that have a vertebral compression fracture, the risk of developing a subsequent fracture later is much higher. Studies have shown there's a five-fold increase in the rate of compression fracture in those that have already had one, a 12-fold increase after two, and a 75-fold increase if two or more. It's obvious that the, the degree of osteoporosis increases the higher number of fractures one will see. Patients with uh, vertebral compression fractures develop a decrease in their overall activity level because of the pain. Because of this, because they become essentially bedfast. That results in further bone loss and an even increased risk for further fracture either at the same site or at additional sites. Because of this uh, loss of activity, they become depressed, they suffer other psychosocial consequences uh, such as anxiety and low self-esteem, and they start this uh, horrible downward trend that is difficult to pull out of. The deformity that occurs with a compression fracture can result in a gibbous or kyphosed appearance of the thoracic spine. This actually shortens the thoracic cavity, developing a stooped posture and a decreased total lung capacity. This affects the pulmonary function of the patient significantly. This can lead to pulmonary complications and even death in some cases. And in fact, when patients with compression fractures are studied, the mortality rate is much higher than when uh, compared to age-corrected controls. Women with vertebral compression fractures had a 23% higher adjusted mortality rate. The balloon kyphoplasty is performed usually under general anesthesia, but can be performed under local anesthesia. It's simply a procedure where a trocar or needle is inserted through the pedicle of the vertebrae into the vertebral body itself. Generally, we place one from the right and one from the left. Down this trocar, a balloon, such as the one I'm holding, is inserted into the vertebral body and inflated. This balloon is actually inflated now, and this is a relatively small balloon. This balloon will create a cavity in the vertebral body and will help to restore some of the height that's lost by the compression. The balloons are withdrawn, and the cavity is filled with methyl methacrylate bone cement. The bone cement used in a kyphoplasty is radio-opaque and can be seen on the fluoroscope that's used intraoperatively. The following patient underwent a kyphoplasty for an osteoporotic uh, compression fracture and would like to share her experience both preoperatively and postoperatively with you now. You like that, babe? Looking at Joan Schoengold now, you wouldn't guess she was recently flat on her back with a spinal fracture. When I had the fracture, it was very severe pain. I was in agony. Joan's not alone. One in two women and one in four men over 50 are at risk for spinal fractures due to osteoporosis. 
in which bones in the spine can become more porous, weak and brittle, and vulnerable to fracture and collapse. I've had patients come in that have described bending over to put a dish in the dishwasher. They felt a pop in their back, they felt sudden onset of pain, and it turned out to be a fracture. Two-thirds of spinal fractures go undiagnosed or untreated, and multiple fractures can lead to pronounced curvature of the spine and serious medical complications. Now, a minimally invasive procedure called balloon kyphoplasty can treat spinal fractures by inflating tiny balloons within the fractured vertebra to restore vertebral height, and the cavity is filled with bone cement to form an internal cast. I was very fortunate that I knew about kyphoplasty. As a result, my procedure was done within a few days. My view is refer them as soon as the fracture is diagnosed. That is the best time to get rid of the pain immediately. It's the best time to get the best chance at correction. After the procedure, I had no more pain. I felt perfectly fine. I'm doing everything that I did before. I can't imagine how I would have suffered had I not known about the balloon kyphoplasty. I'm very lucky. As a result of balloon kyphoplasty, patients experience increased ability to return to everyday physical activities, and they report improved mental health and vitality as well. In most cases, balloon kyphoplasty is covered by Medicare and often by other insurance carriers. Although the complication rate with balloon kyphoplasty has been demonstrated to be low, as with most surgical procedures, there are risks, including serious complications. Patients should consult with their doctor for a full discussion of risks. I'm Gary Williams. A Uniting Checkup today, thousands of people who suffer with osteoporosis are living with severe pain because of a fracture. Now that pain is being alleviated with a procedure called kyphoplasty. It's a corrective surgery that restores vertebral height, reduces deformity, and provides immediate pain relief. Betty Landreth has osteoporosis and arthritis in her back. She lives with mild pain, but one day the pain became severe. This was new and rather acute. Landra's doctor told her she had a fracture in her vertebrae. It's a common problem for people with osteoporosis. Simple trauma such as a fall or sometimes no trauma at all, even a sneeze or a hard bout of coughing can cause a fracture in one of the vertebrae and collapse the vertebrae, much like crushing a Coke can or a uh, soft drink can. Landra's doctor recommended she have a procedure called kyphoplasty. Insert a balloon into the vertebrae through a, through a needle puncture and expand that balloon and that allows us to re-expand the vertebrae. We withdraw the balloon, the, the balloon and insert bone cement into the cavity that we've created in the vertebrae and that forms a cast within the vertebrae and re-strengthens that vertebrae. Giving a patient immediate relief from the pain, Betty Landreth says she was better than her normal self after the procedure. And I was walking a mile within Oh, four weeks at minimum, um, maybe maximum four weeks. The surgery takes about 15 to 30 minutes for each vertebrae. Kyphoplasty is not a cure for osteoporosis. It just helps mend a fragile vertebrae to keep you from having further injuries. I'd like to quickly run through a few simple case presentations of compression fractures. This is a 91-year-old female with an osteoporotic compression fracture. And though on this DVT the, the images are difficult to see, there is notable compression at that level. It's seen both on the plain film on the left as well as on the MRI uh, adjacent to it. The film on the right demonstrates a post-kyphoplasty film and the barium impregnated bone cement can be seen as a white ovoid appearance within the fractured vertebrae. There's been good restoration of height as well as co correction of some of the angulation. This is a multi-segmental uh, compression fracture and you can see uh, on the right there's been restoration of uh, normal height and, and loss of the angulation. Again, uh, the radiopaque bone cement is seen within the vertebrae. The vertebrae uh, seen in the film on the left is almost completely collapsed and the post-operative film on the right demonstrates good restoration of height and again, uh, restoration of the normal curvature of the spine, reducing the angulation that was present uh, on the preoperative film. Another uh, case demonstrating uh, correction of the angular deformity. In essence, the complication rate is quite low with uh, kyphoplasty. Even in the initial studies, there were no significant complications associated with the procedure and only one minor complication with anesthesia. 
All in all, the procedure is very quick, can be performed under local anesthesia, although generally is performed under a general anesthetic. It allows a quick return back to a functional lifestyle, almost immediate relief of pain, and prevents the long and often arduous recovery from these compression fractures. This in turn decreases the morbidity of this compromising problem greatly. In conclusion, vertebral compression fractures occur more often than hip and wrist fractures combined. Balloon kyphoplasty is a minimally invasive and viable option for the treatment of these patients. In my opinion, it probably helps them if used early in the course of their illness rather than waiting weeks to see if they'll improve. Oftentimes, this one or two month period they have waited to see if the pain will reduce has been associated with extreme bed rest and immobility. In an elderly person, they can lose up to 1% of their bone mass per week uh, when bed fat. This results in an increased problem with further fractures and even further kyphosis from the uh, already present fracture. There's a marked reduction in their pain with this procedure almost immediately allowing them to return back to their normality of life almost in the immediate post-operative period.